Hello everybody, welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. Today we are going to talk about the issue of the PLI, Public Lands Initiative. Now this is a collaborative effort that was started by Congressman Rob Bishop and it involves about 1,200 stakeholders with the aim of making a permanent decision about how we use our public lands in seven of Utah's eastern counties. The aim of the entire project was to settle the multiple use issues of public and federal lands in the seven eastern Utah counties. Now, the idea was to take all of the designations for land out of that ever-changing regulatory environment and codify them into law through legislation. The goal of the PLI is to end up with a congressional bill that would logically consolidate and designate large areas of federal land into specific areas of primary but not exclusive use. The end result would be a bill that everyone could live with, but most likely none would be completely happy with. The reasoning behind the initiative and subsequent bill is that decisions on public land designations and use work much better when engaged at a grassroots or on-the-ground perspective rather than the top-down 30,000-foot level. There is a work-in-progress draft of the bill you can read for yourself at utahpli.com. The PLI has been well over two years in the making, and it's been rather intensive work, and it's not quite finished yet. They wanted to get all the stakeholders together and set the priorities and values for all those different stakeholders and use compromise to find the level that works best for everybody. And according to Representative Jason Chaffetz, who is now a co-sponsor of this effort, that's no easy task. But we've got to be able to develop these energy corridors uh, and create some opportunity for businesses to thrive. We have to take care of the recreational communities so that people can continue from the Wasatch Front and all around Utah and around the country and around the world, come in and, and enjoy Utah uh, without destroying the public lands. And at the same time, we want to save, save things um, that shouldn't be touched. And so if you're trying to accomplish all of that and get to certainty, that's why you got to have a bill. It's got to be a congressionally directed bill. The president can never do this. The PLI covers 18 million acres of federal land across seven counties in eastern Utah. Grand County, Uinta County, Duchesne, Summit, Carbon, Emory, and San Juan counties all have public lands in their boundaries that would be affected by the PLI. Reading directly from the PLI website, it states the Public Lands Initiative is a locally driven process to bring resolution to some of the most challenging land disputes in the state of Utah. The PLI is rooted in the belief that conservation and economic development can coexist and make Utah a better place to live, work, and to visit. But the PLI has come under a lot of fire and criticism as well mostly from environmental groups. They say that it doesn't go anywhere near far enough to protect wilderness characteristics and that it opens up way too much land for fossil fuel development. And according to the Southern Utah Wilderness Alliance, they've been shut out of the decision-making process. Some people have complained they weren't fully consulted. Some people have complained it was just a county commissioner bill. I'm concerned some of the Native American tribes have approached me and indicated they thought they were brought in late. They're not sure about some of the transfer of land. There's a lot of questions, a lot of, a lot of issues, which are always going to be the case in something this complex. Congressman Chaffetz asserts that some of the environmental groups have not been interested in a solution from the very beginning. What I guess bothers us is that ads were written and produced and talking points put out literally less than an hour after it was introduced. They hadn't even read the bill. They never had the, the genuine um, approach to say, hey, we want to be at the table as part of the solution. So how much land is included in the PLI? Well, let's run it by the numbers. There are 18 million acres of federally owned land that come under consideration under the PLI. It is proposed that 4.3 million would be placed in either wilderness or special conservation areas. What the environmental groups are currently pushing for instead is a 1.9 million acre monument designation called Bears Ears. Environmental groups favor the Bears Ears National Monument because monument designation is permanent and prohibits any development or even private use of the land. 
according to Rebecca Benali, a Navajo and San Juan County commissioner, the local tribes do not want a monument. That's why I think President Obama needs to respect the people, who it's going to affect, and listen to the people that has to live with the decision, whether whatever kind of designation it is. And I just don't think that he should use the Antiquities Act to designate a national monument. That's the, that, that's, that would be devastating for the people. Well, now we have a clear picture of the PLI, both geographically and politically. We want to address some of the criticism. We want to cut through the clutter and get to the facts, as told by the people who really know the situation the best. We'll be right back on The County Seat. 149 million years in the making, dinosaurs once roamed this land. Now they're found at the Dinosaur National Monument. Let's take you beyond the bones. We call it Dinosaur Land. You'll find it offers adventures and sights not seen anywhere else in the world. Come to Dinosaur Land, Vernal, Utah. You'll want to stay forever. The dinosaurs did. What would you do with an extra day in Utah Valley? Explore the Wasatch Mountains? Snap a family photo at Bridal Veil Falls. Cool off on Utah Lake or the Provo River. No matter what you're searching for, you can find it in Utah Valley. Bring everyone together. Color, it's something that can be seen. But have you ever wanted to reach out and touch it? Experience it. In San Juan County, Utah color comes to life like nowhere else on earth. Color can be more than an abstract. Color can be your gateway to a new world. Visit San Juan County and explore the past, present, and future in a way that you've only dreamed of. San Juan County, color, your experience. I'm a Utah's own dairy producer. I care about the health of my animals, and I care about the quality of food we produce. Because when it comes to providing quality dairy products, I understand the importance of Utah grown and raised. And the jobs we enjoy are vital, because Utah's own supports our communities. As a consumer, I look for Utah's own products, because Utah's own is good for me, and it's good for Utah. Keep it here at home, Utah's own. Shopping in Davis County has never been better. Experience Station Park, Northern Utah's premier gathering place for shopping, dining, and entertainment. With over 100 shops, Station Park is something for the whole family. Or explore the shopping possibilities this season under one roof at the Layton Hills Mall. Both are conveniently located north of downtown Salt Lake, just off I-15. Come take advantage of special discounts and a wide selection of stores. Visit playindavis.com for more info. Welcome back to the county seat. Today we are talking about the Public Lands Initiative, the PLI. We started our show by covering the framework so that you understand what it is. Now let's address some of the criticism. Most primary of those criticisms is that the PLI does not put enough land under proper protection, not enough conservation. But is that really a legitimate claim? The current draft of the PLI protects or conserves 4.3 million acres of land, designates 301 miles of river as scenic and wild, and expands Arches National Park by 19,000 acres. While this may not sound like much in a bill that covers 18 million acres, the PLI only opens up 1.05 million acres to new recreation or economic development opportunities. The majority of the remaining land is undesignated which essentially means that the current uses such as grazing can continue, but nothing new can happen on the land without going through a designation process first. What's interesting about the Bears Ears proposal for a national monument that's being pushed by the environmental group is that it only includes 1.9 million acres. Now, a monument designation, while not necessarily wilderness, 
does prohibit a lot of activities and may preclude the local tribes who rely on that land for their very physical existence. They collect firewood there to heat their homes. They eat pine nuts. It's a staple of their diet. And eventually it could lead to them being removed from the land, such as happened in Cameron, Arizona, when the Wupatki National Monument was made. It literally moved people off of their ancestral grounds. For the purposes of this discussion, it is important to understand the concept of wilderness versus designated wilderness. Most people would consider wilderness to simply be the wild, where there are no buildings or permanent residences of humans. But the legal definition of designated wilderness is much more prohibitive. Wilderness designation prohibits any kind of motorized vehicles, roads, or even motorized or mechanical equipment. In other words, designated wilderness means you preserve land in its natural state as opposed to conserving land in its optimum state. If you preserve a forest, you take a hands-off approach. It might burn. If you conserve a forest, you manage it to keep the forest healthy and protect it from fire. A wilderness designation is so restrictive that the camera that's taking the picture of me talking to you would be illegal to use inside a wilderness area. In addition to that, you couldn't go in on search and rescue to help save a family or a child. You can't fly over it, and you can't fight fires to protect it. So the design of the PLI is to put most of the area under conservation protection or undesignated. That way you can protect the resources and the artifacts without putting undue restrictions on them. There is a great interest by everyone involved in the PLI to preserve what needs to be preserved, but as Benali says, economic development is also needed. I think we're all striving for the same thing, is to protect and preserve certain areas, but be mindful that we have um, economic development that we need to do so that our counties can survive. Currently, the PLI sits at 65 pages long. 39 pages are dedicated to conservation. In fact, there is so much protection that it has come under criticism from the people who would like to see more of the land developed and used. But Commissioner Jake Malore of Carbon County says, well, that's all part of the process. So the process was, was quite a lot like a business negotiation. Since my background is in business, it was, it was very invigorating to be a part of. It was, it was quite a thrill to be, be there and, and to participate. It was frustrating at times. It was also, you know, there were a lot of good moments where you really had aha, wow, I understand you now, to a lot of the people in the room. The PLI isn't finished yet. And the discussion draft that is in circulation right now is just that. It's a draft. Conservation will continue to be an important part of this process, but there are other important issues that need to be discussed, and we will take that topic up when we return on the special edition of the County Seat. There is a place where looking out means looking in, where an impression lasting only a few seconds will be imprinted on a life forever, where courage is forged and innocence rediscovered, where remembering is rewarding and forgetting unforgettable. There is a place where truth is felt and where seeing is believing. There is a place. The weekends just never feel like they're long enough. By the time you get to a destination, you're worn out and you may need a vacation to recover from your last vacation. The solution is closer than you think and that's just what you need. You can find the desert at Little Sahara, the cool refreshment of Yuba Lake, escape to the green of the forest on the Nebo Loop. Make your escape to Juab County. It'll change your family forever.
unlimited opportunity for adventure. It's all about knowing where to look. ATV adventures, rock crawling events, art festivals, and wildlife events. The opportunities are limitless. Pick your adventure in Millard County. The Utah Farm Bureau has always been there to fight for the needs of its members. With discount programs on items ranging from vehicles and ATVs to health and wellness. The membership fees aren't big, but the results are. We've been around since 1916, and we're not leaving anytime soon. Utah Farm Bureau. We work for those who work to feed the world. Welcome back to the County Seat. Today we are talking about the PLI, Public Lands Initiative, which is an effort to create a bill to determine what to do and how to manage the federally owned lands in the seven eastern counties of Utah. Now, so far we have taken a look at one criticism by a limited number or small number of groups, but there are other criticisms and we will analyze those right now. Environmental groups are criticizing the PLI for opening up millions of acres of fossil fuel development. But is this true? The current draft of the PLI only specifies a little over one million acres for development, both recreational and economic. In other words, even if every inch of that had some kind of fossil fuel underneath it, we would still be nowhere near millions of acres. In fact, the draft outline specifically states in Title 11, long-term energy development certainty, that only lands that the BLM has already identified as being open to energy development can be used to do so. Activist environmental groups have actually been very successful in creating a broad public perception that extraction industries use a scorch and burn philosophy, that they pillage the ground and leave it barren, when actually they have a pretty good record. See, most people don't realize that extraction industries, as part of their leases on public land, have to rehabilitate more land than they actually lease. So they actually have a really good record. Essentially, when we do reclamation, we try to capitalize on whatever is available to us. We try to maximize those things that Mother Nature has given us to work with. That's topsoil, moisture. We try to use those to our benefit to control erosion, to concentrate moisture, and to ensure success. Most of our private industry companies, coal mines included, are better at land reclamation than any environmental group I've ever seen. Of all the millions of dollars that are donated to them, how much of that money has ever gone back to the land? The current draft of the PLI outright states that there will be no energy development leases of any kind on the 4.3 million acres put under protection under the proposal. However, this leaves another area or a concern left unaddressed, and that is the health and vitality of the local communities that have built and survived around these industries. I think uh, people that don't understand this issue, that aren't members of, of that uh, group, need to understand that this is where we live. We, our families, have made a living off this land for years. And we've been great stewards of the land through ranching, mining, hunting and fishing. I, we love the land, we recreate there. That's, I take my kids out there to view the beautiful places and with with all the de development that's gone on there, nothing's been impaired. The views are still there, the majesty is still there, it's still awe-inspiring. Commissioner Malore also says that people choose to live in these counties because they love the lifestyle and they love the land. We, we, we love it so much that we have chosen to live there, where there aren't big strip malls, where there aren't all these other things. We live there, we love it in rural Utah, and it's where we're passionate to live. And we understand what will be a detriment to us better than somebody who's never been there or who's visited once or who, who, who doesn't, doesn't participate, us, participate with us in what we have to go through, the sacrifices we make to be able to live in rural Utah. And so if we're considering, you know, an oil pump or an oil rig or something for, for jobs, 
in our community, then it should just be understood that that's not going to be something that's going to be detrimental to the environment. The counties whose lands will be affected by the PLI are all on board with the process and are actively contributing to find a solution that meets everyone's needs. Any and all who have taken a stake in the process have been involved, which brings us to the third criticism, the idea that these environmental groups were not involved in the PLI process. Casey Hope says that just isn't true. We gathered local stakeholders of all different kinds, and we invited um, some of these environmental groups to come in as well. And, and everybody got to have input and talk about what their needs were. And that, to me, is the success of it, is having not just the commission or not just the energy group, but all multiple users, from grazers to energy users, all the way through. And some of them complain because they're now being excluded from PLI conversations. And it's not that they're intentionally being left off. They've been included from the very beginning, but now they no longer want to cooperate. They no longer want to participate at the level that we're all participating and compromising and negotiating. In the beginning, I mentioned that this process has been a process of negotiations. All the stakeholders have shown up to the table, even stakeholders who really don't have a stake. We've been giving things to. Nature's Conservancy and Pew and all these other organizations have been in Carbon County from Washington, D.C. We've listened to what they had to say. We took into respect and consideration what they had to bring to us. It would appear that SUA and the Grand Canyon Trust's growing distance from the PLI doesn't come from exclusion in the process, but rather from their own choice. We've had meetings with people and we've done hours and hours and hours of work to provide them what they want and they come to the table completely disregard everything that we've done. They haven't even looked at the maps that we've sent them week after week and, and they expect us to give them more. And we've already given thousands of acres for this type of use or that type of use. And some people just aren't as easily satisfied. Where I believe uh, Aunt Barry Sears and our tribal coalition seems to think that PLI process doesn't work is because they took themselves away from the table once they um, began um, this movement with different environmental group. And so they took themselves away from the table. In their mind, that might be what they say is not working, but it, how can you criticize a process when you take yourself out? So to me, that's the criticism and it's really simple. If you wanna be part of something, you don't give up and you don't start a blame game because you made the decision to take yourself out of the process. Even if you don't want to take these commissioners' words for it, take a look at this footage. The county seat shot video of a road trip sponsored by Congressman Bishop and Chaffetz to tour some of the lands being discussed in the PLI. And you can clearly see David Garbett from the Southern Utah Wilderness Alliance the most vocal and antagonistic environmental group criticizing the PLI. Not only was this group included, but they were also clearly involved in the discussion. We'll be back with some final thoughts about the PLI and its detractors in just a minute. There's a little place on a Utah map Where I was raised, where my heart's at Where the sagebrush grows Wild and high, and the stars come out at night. Oh, there ain't nothing like being raised in the basin with the youth reservation, skin starvation, that Duchesne County life. Kanab, base camp for your southern Utah adventures. In Kanab. Let's be honest, you don't know much about Beaver County, 
Well, let me tell you about it. It's the birthplace of outlaw Butch Cassidy and adventure Philo T. Farnsworth. Some of the best skiing in Utah is at Eagle Point. You've got camping, Canyon Breeze Golf Course, Crusher in the Tushers, Beaver Territorial Courthouse, Snowmobiling, Renewable Energy, Pioneer Car Show, Squeaky Cheese, Ghost Town to Explore, Best Water in the Country, Paiute ATV Trails, Old Frisco Kilns, Horse Races, Hunting, Fishing, and it's a good place to live. Beaver County, mountains of fun. I could tell you more, but why don't you come and see it for yourself? Welcome back to the county seat. This is the part of the show where I get to do the editorial, where I express my own opinion and it is mine. As I see it, we have come full circle on this PLI process from the beginning right to where we're headed. The idea was originally to set all the cards on the table and work for a compromise that would provide some certainty for all the stakeholders. No winner takes all, but everybody walks away with something. We would take hundreds of thousands of acres out of limbo and give them a purpose going forward and stop once and for all this sue and settle revolving door that the environmental communities have engaged in that thwart the process of multiple use, allowing us all to enjoy the promise that the federal agencies who are stewards of our public land are supposed to deliver to us. Everyone that was at the table dealt their best hand and got the best compromise they could and when that was done, the environmental groups, some of them, backed out of the process and have now gone to the president using this process as justification for him to manage by decree. Now, I don't know where you sit on the political spectrum, but to me, that kind of action seems more like the action of a distant crown than a republic of the self-governed. We've given you a lot of information today about the PLI, and I'm sure it's contrary to a lot of what you've heard in the media. So I encourage you to find out more for yourself. Go to their website, utahpli.com, and find out the details about the Public Lands Initiative. As always, thank you for joining us today on the county seat. Remember, local government is where your life happens. This is a unique opportunity for you to be involved and be part of the process. We'll look for you next week on the county seat. crave adventure? Do you want to escape and find a new world to discover? Do you sit around wondering what to do next? Well, if you answered yes to any of these questions, you need a prescription of At Your Leisure. All the outdoor thrills, spills, and trails you can handle. It doesn't matter if you want to be in the water, in the air, or in the wild, AYL has something for you. So get out of that funk and take your medicine. At Your Leisure, Saturday nights at 10.30 right after the news and Sunday morning at 9 on ABC4 Utah. If you'd like to share this video with your friends, well, you do that right here. If you would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you do that over here. If you'd like to interact with us on the county seat, that happens over here. If you want to watch the next episode of the county seat, you can catch it Saturday night at 11 or Sunday morning at 8.30 on ABC4, Good For Utah.